Alamo Heights Football, a production of AH Sports Media. Tonight, back home at Harry B. Orem Stadium, the Mules try to move to 3-0 and on this young season, continuing district play, welcoming the Highland Owls to Broadway alongside... LeBron Fields and Taj Young. My name's Casey Vieira. Week three is here already for an Alamo Heights team coming off an 81 to nothing victory last week to open district play on a high. And LeBron, we bring you in. And last week, you say 81 to nothing, and there's not really not more to piggyback beyond that. It was a uh, it was an uh, an evening that saw them get out early, get out often. All 60 plus guys who dress played made short work at the office and starting conference for a district play rather on a high definitely uh, it was a great game for your backup second string and third string teams they got some action they got some game reps in case they ever needed it. it's still a young season so in that kind of kobe game that 81 point special when <laughs> olives you take it you walk out of there no one was hurt and you move forward to week three and you just hope to build on that same performance don't know that it's going to be the same productive performance as that this week but We'll see. Generally speaking, 81 point performances are few and far between. We'll just throw that out there. Agree. I mean, agree. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't, I don't want to say this is a thing, and I don't want to say it'll never happen again, but like you said eloquently, it's not something that happens on a regular basis. 603 total yards of offense is what the final stat line read for the Mules. 558 of that by way of the rushing variety. Eight different players logging a touchdown and generally speaking that is the case when you put up 81 points for the mules as they try to carry that momentum tonight taking on a highland owls team under new direction under new head man roger landeros coming over the associate head coach slash defensive coordinator for a few years over us at stevens high school oh and two on the young season losing last week in their district opener 54 uh, 26 against mccollum but the conversation starts, and I don't want to say ends, but starts with a guy that perhaps maybe after Michael Terry is the best playmaker in the district in Willie Gaskin. Willie Gaskin is electric. He is their version of Michael Terry. Um, that's some, somebody that our defense has to be very weary of and leery of and make sure they have all eyes on. Keep the man in front of you and roll call to the football when he has the ball. If not, he could get loose and make this game juicy. To give you an idea of what Gaskin brings, of of course, a first-team all-district wide receiver slash running back slash sometimes put him at quarterback and see what happens. They throw him on the defensive side of the football as well. Your do-it-all, your classic do-it-all type of high school football player. Nearly 1,800 all-purpose yards last season for the Owls in addition to 22 scores on the year. Last week in their defeat against McCollum had three touchdowns, two touchdowns rather, and 146 all-purpose yards uh, leading the way for his Highland Owls team, Highlands Owls team. Uh, some more playmakers, or at least one more in addition that they're going to be riding on. Kind of one of those deals where uh, we've seen a lot with Michael Terry so far with Coaches are saying you're going to throw the house at you, let somebody beat you. And there's another guy on this team that's been off to a good start, Mateo Rodriguez in the backfield, senior running back. has done a good job helping balance that offense, at least last, last week he did so far. Definitely using his senior leadership. You know, this is not his first round on, in, on the block. And he's a steady, steady back. And, again, you put that one-two punch, helps protect your, your quarterback there and gives your offense a, a, the ability to drive the field. And hopefully you can hit a big play. Um, to, to get in the end zone. Highlands entering off of a playoff appearance last season. Actually, this was when they were in two, they were two different districts in 2021, a co-district champion as well. And they're not in the same district as the Mules two years ago, making the playoffs in each of their last three seasons under Coach Castillo before he departed uh, for Kyle Lehman High School in the offseason, leading to Roger Landeros coming over and taking the head job for the Owls as we approached a little less than 10 minutes before kickoff tonight here at Harry B. Orem Stadium. Alamo Heights trying to go to 3-0 and on the young season under head coach Ron Riddiman entering at 33 
and six in his head coaching career for the Mules, his fourth season in a place that they haven't lost in since its renovation, entering the 2021 season, or I guess it's rebirth, renewal. Is that renewal, the way we're going to yeah. call it? Let's Return, renaissance. renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Throw all that stuff out there. Alamo Heights has played tremendously well in this building in the past few years, but a test tonight, Laron, because the last time we saw them play a team that had a, a, a real playmaker in the backfield, and that was Seguin on opening night. Yes. And they were a problem. They were very much a problem. This was an offensive, uh, should say, defensive showing, rather, that Ron Ridman wasn't particularly, you know, he generally speaking, he's a glass half full type of guy. So I say critical in the most positive sense of the way because Ron Ridderman, again, is a very glass half full yes. type of guy, but was very cognizant of that. When they played a good team with good playmakers like Seguin, they struggled a little bit. And tonight, this is probably the closest you're going to get to the playmakers comparable that they have out there at the Highlands. Referring to, you, you talked to them uh, right from the start last week. You said, what's what? What's the uh, agenda? Well, what are you guys thinking? And sure enough, expectedly so. He said, Willie Gaskin, that's the guy. Got to keep an eye on all times. But he also went as far to call the aforementioned Mateo Rodriguez the fastest guy on the field between the two teams. So point being, the defense has a chore tonight to try to get the mules back on the right side of the ledger and start 3-0. and Well, you have to, as a defense, love a match like this to test your mettle. I know defensive quarter Jordan Ricker will cook up a game plan to put his best players in position to make sure that they are not the focal point. I can understand week one. It's week one, new defense. You have nine new players on defense, and you get to face a Seguin team that has two running backs because we were expecting one running back, and we got two for the price of one. Mm -hmm. Tonight, Willie Gaskin on the perimeter. I, I can't co-sign on – uh, Mateo Rodriguez being the fastest player on the field, I guess we'll have to see. But if that is the case, then we have to bottle him up. And that's going to be the chore of the defensive line, starting in the middle and then going all the way out to your 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 ends, right? And your back are scraping and filling. Like I said, defense coordinator Jordan Ricker, I'm assuming we'll have a game plan specifically for those two because after that, the players seem to not be as talented or as athletic. So force them in other places. Again, putting pressure on the quarterback, uh, number nine for your Highlands Isles, who is a freshman, by the way. I know it's probably something you were going to point out, but having him at quarterback will allow us to hopefully put pressure and make mistakes on Rome Romeo Garza. Because uh, freshman, hey, while he may be on varsity, he's still a freshman. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> Deep. Deep. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, Romeo Garza checking in, uh, as Laron alluded to, in his freshman season, of course, class of 2027. Uh, two touchdown to three interception ratio on the season. Last week against McCollum, not a terrible stat line. Threw for 179 on 11 of 19. A pair of touchdowns, also a pair of interceptions. And you ha have to imagine... Part of the reason Willie Gaskin has been used a little bit more at wide receiver is to try to alleviate the pressure and give their young quarterback someone, something to throw to. And having Gaskin as an option is certainly a good way to go about things. We approach the five minute or so mark as we get ready to see the Mules take the field for this week three of the 2023 season piggybacking on some of the numbers that we opened up with uh, for Alamo Heights coming off of last week 558 of their 603 yards were on the ground Colin Ertz only threw six passes last week well he didn't have to throw many passes <laughs> between his legs Michael Terry's legs DK Garza's fresh legs um, there was enough field out there for them to run on and then as the game went on the other other guys started running as well. Brady Pena, uh, Robert Bicker, Bickler threw one pass and had to be for a touchdown. So that ground game was the Alamo Heights Mules Express, and that's you don't you don't break when it's not broken. That is true. That that is true. You you do not. Well, you're <laughs> not supposed to. We've you're seen, not we, supposed we've to. Seen teams right. Like you know, game one that went away from the bell cows and gave us an opportunity to to get where we were, and that's a victory. 
Yeah, runs of 65 and 53 yards for Ernst last week, making up what was a 183-yard rushing performance in their win against Brackenridge. He has 100-plus yards on the ground in each of his first two games. Michael Terry had a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown. To give you an idea that, well, everything that Rob Ridman dialed up was pretty much going their way, <laughs> needless to say, there was and hoping they can carry that over tonight. There was that one moment in the game where, you know, Brackenridge did drive it down to, I believe it was the seven-yard line, and found themselves in the fourth down situation where they fumbled, and that was the the bell that broke and the, the floodplain started rolling through, because from that point forward, I don't think we stopped scoring. We went in at halftime 35-0, and um, we just took advantage of every step. We're going to step aside as the mules get ready to take the field. We have a new hype, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we're getting locked into that as well. Yeah, we'll let the mules take the field and let you take in the scenery as we're about five-ish minutes or so. The Alamo Heights Mules Band under the direction of David Stevenson putting a bow on, I was going to say, another pregame, if you will, I guess, for the sake of the conversation, we'll call it another, <laughs> another uh, pregame here. Laron, keys to tonight. Go for it. 
Keys for the Highlands Owls. Willie Gaskin must be money Gaskin. He must get the ball as much as possible in many different ways to keep this game close. Um, Once again, we want to thank our Romeo Garza must not be a gift giver of the football. And if they happen to get momentum and a lead, Mateo Rodriguez must be the bell cow to keep the Alamo Heights Mules offense off the field. Keys for the Alamo Heights Mules. As you know, also we've been saying this. Grown man runs, grown man scores. But also, I think the key to victory tonight is you do need to involve Bennett Johnson, Park Zarkar, Josh Tato on the perimeter, and DK Garza has to do what he did last week and this week to keep this offense on the field and make big plays to demoralize the Hawkins Owls. We know Colin Hurts can run with his feet. I like to see him be sharper in the passing game and more efficient. And also, none of the mules turn the ball over for them to be successful. Defensively for both teams, Get a seatbelt and buckle up because it's going to be a ride. Consider it buckled. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it buckled, my friend. As the Mules will kick off to start this evening, Anderson Bogus will do the honors for Alamo Heights as we get ready to see what should be an offense. I was going to say an offensive firepower showing from both teams. I don't. I don't want to speak to that yet. We know the Heights are going to are, are going to break on their side as they did last week. That 81, even if they didn't want to, it seems like everything was working last week. As back to return, squib kick heading the other direction, and right away they faked that end around the Gaskins and promptly taken down. A good job again by this Mule Specials team. Getting back, Mateo Rodriguez and Gaskin back there trying to get a little crafty. Nobody home. And the Owls offense will take the field at their own 19-yard line behind their freshman quarterback, the aforementioned Romeo Garza. That was good coverage downfield on the kickoff. Um, Highlands tried to do some trickery, some trickeration, and it, it got them some, some yards. They're starting at the 19, but... Here we go. We're buckled up, as you said, Casey. Let's see how this defense responds to this Highlands Owls offense attack in this first series. Highlands runs a pretty spread or largely spread offense. Primarily a passing team, as we mentioned before last week, passed the ball 19 times. And it's to the ground that they go right off the bat. This is Mateo Rodriguez last weekend, 89 yards showing, 69 of it coming on one play, a positive gainer. Uh, we'll call it a gain of about five. And it looks like there might have been a little, uh, uh, some extracurricular, if you will, as an owl got off the field. What it looked like naked eye before the snap or did not get off in time, but either way, the owls will go right back to work. Let's see what the defense does here, holding up against the run. And it's back to the ground they go. This is Rodriguez doing a good job. A little fancy footwork. Going to be shy of the marker. Going to be a third down and short upcoming. That was a powerful run right there by Rodriguez. Um, getting them the first down, moving the change, as we said he needed to do. He's doing his part. Let's see if they take a shot here with Willie Gaskin. Well, give him the first down, move the chains. So two receivers, going to be a three-receiver set for Garza, the freshman. And it's back to the ground they go again. And it's become apparent in this early portion of the game the direction that they want to go and is try to ease into things a little bit, get comfortable in the ground, work last week. Might, not, might as well try it again, right? Yeah, again, it's not broken. Don't break it. The, you need the pound of ground. He may get 40 carries tonight, and our defense needs to buckle up and make sure that it's a hard 40. Yeah, week two for the Owls was actually pretty well dispersed in terms of yardage. 180 pass to 123 on the ground, and again, it's Rodriguez, and again, a solid gainer. Going to be short of the marker. Rodriguez, the ball carrier. But it's become very much intentional as to what they're going to do here in the early going. Third down. And about two on deck. Right Short now, it seems like the Mules defense has to it's figure it out their run fits. Um, on, this, on that last play, Mr. Rodriguez cut back against the grain because we were too aggressive going one direction. So he looks like a slippery back. I don't know that he's a home run hitter, but he is a thumper right now. So he's a five hitter, not a four? 
Yes. Three or four. You're putting them in the five hole for now? Put them in the five hole. Okay. Spread it out on a third down and two, a four receiver set. Rush coming. Garza gets it off. And who else? Back to Rodriguez. Going to pick up the first down. First time we've seen him throw the football. Romeo Garza. And to his credit, had a couple blue jerseys in his face. Made the play. Picked up the first down. Very crafty play by the offensive coordinator for Highlands. Uh, getting his best back in position to catch a screen pass. And also setting up his young quarterback with a safe pass and gaining yards, getting a first down, moving the chains. So already pushing up towards midfield. And, Leron, you and I were talking uh, before the broadcast that the turnover numbers for Highlands is what's alarming, but it does not seem to be an issue of them not being able to move the football. And part of the reason why is Willie Gaskin now lining up at quarterback, something you'll see quite frequently, and it's back to the ground. He goes, not much of a gain on the play but nine turnovers in two games that, that's the alarming number but it's interesting because you look at the yardage not terrible but it's nine turnovers in two games kind of speaks to the fact that they get the momentum but kind of shoot themselves in the foot and part of the reason why they're zero and two right now it would appear so they, they seems like they're doing a great job moving ball down the field and sometimes in the red zone you get a little tight, and that's where mistakes can happen because the field shrinks. you got to be more accurate and persistent. This has been working so far. Rodriguez crossing midfield. Rodriguez tripped up at the It's going to be a third down at about four or five coming. Similar look defensively. No senior linebacker Will Broderick tonight. But the big notable change that Ron Riddiman made last week was that he inserted Patrick Ariaga who started week one as the starting running back, moved him to linebacker, moved him to edge. And it really, in Ron Riddiman's word, it sparked something in this defense that at times went stagnant. And again, you see him lining up at end once again on a third down and seven. Rodriguez evades a couple tackles, gonna be close to the marker, shifty. Absolutely Rodriguez, shifty, and it's gonna be close. Heights brought the extra man, brought the rush. And it looked like Highlands was just able to sneak out of it, pick up the first down, and they do exactly that. Owls doing a great job moving the ball in this opening possession. They're doing a great job right there. They were aided by the Allen White's defense with the arm tackles because he broke uh, several arm tackles to get that first down. So spotted at the 43-yard line inside of eight minutes to go here in this first quarter of play this week three. As back to Rodriguez, it is nobody home. Lauren Christensen and a host of other jerseys Rodriguez, collapsing on, on the play. Ran area. into a brick wall of blue. Going to be a loss of about, we'll call it three. The, and the Mules defense maybe sniffing out what's been perhaps one play too greedy on the offensive side for Highlands. I have to agree with you there. They they. The Alba Heights dual mules are still seeing that they're running the ball, so they're looking for it. But it also could bite you in the butt because if you fall asleep, this is where Gaskin can make his magic happen. So with the negative play like this, we need to capitalize, make third down even longer, or keep it third and long, make it a predictable passing situation, and play keep everybody in front of you. So second and 13 coming. And it looks like the, that play clock was winding down, and Landeros caught it. Coach Roger Landeros caught it. So he got the timeout off in time. time. Interesting story about Roger Landeros we were talking about beforehand before we got started. This was a guy who has bounced around the coaching scene a little bit. Since 2005, he got his first job as an assistant. But the origin of his coaching career, and we got to credit Dave Campbell, uh, public, Dave Campbell Publication for coming across this, Ron, actually was not football. It was finance. Yes. Well, they go hand in hand. Football and finance. That is true. Down, you know, <laughs> that is true. Bullets, bearish, however you want it. So it makes you a good coach. You can analyze things. Yeah, eight years out of school was working in finance, working as a banker. Now trying to find pay dirt if you see what I did there. Find pay dirt there. Yes, find well, money. Well, yeah, you yeah. know, you, when you're finding money, you're finding touchdowns, you're finding success <laughs> on the field. That's it's just like banking. And right now, oh. There was no money in that bank on that play. No, bank 
Yeah, that's what that's one way of putting it. So Alamo Heights all on top of the read uh, option. Garza kind of got caught in no man's land there. And that's it's tricky with those reads sometimes. Down. You read it incorrectly, you get plays like that blown up. Mules did blow it up. You saw four jerseys getting in the backfield, and it leads to a third down and 17 upcoming. If this trend continues, this will be a huge stop for the Mules defense because although it seems like they were getting gashed, there's only been a 30-yard movement, and we're back at the 50. Yeah, a pair of first downs. We'll see if they can get in two. At least a reasonable fourth down range. Not going to be the case. Garza got it off in time. Flag on the field. This they, will be interesting. And they will be interesting. It looked like he got it off, but no, it's a live football. Joseph DePerriere coming up with it. The flag could have been in the area of roughing the quarterback. It could have been in the area of Alamo Heights. Getting a little too eager, jumping off sides. The defense is still on the field. And you know Ron Riddiman's sake, he's hoping it's not that rough in the passer because it that's a be third down and 17 that's turning into a first down. We'll see what the call is. If that's rough in the passer, we need to go put flags on because the man had the ball in his hand and it should have been anything intentional grounding because he was not outside the pocket. Holding, okay. And there it is, none of the above. None of the above on the play. So, the ball will be spotted at the 34-yard line after the hold upcoming. I would call you Nostradamus because you hit the nail on the head. They make three steps forward, and they just made took four steps backwards. Like, they started this whole possession on the 19, and now we're ending up on the 33. And punt formation. That's odd. That goes to the turnover factor. That's a, yeah, there you go. That ends up being an overall gain of 14 yards on the possession, theoretically, a plus 14, if you will. That looked like a very promising drive. That was a demoralizing kind of drive. It seems like that's kind of been a microcosm, the early portion of the season as back to return is trip johnson this one is going to be out of bounds spot at about the 44 yard line is where they will spot it for colin ernst back for week three under center the captain for this mules team a 183 yard rushing performance last week for ernst with a pair of touchdowns as we mentioned before only six passes on the play but back to work is the track standout for Alamo Heights. This seems like arena football right now because we have 56 <laughs> yards to pay dirt, and it's a short field. And that was something that's really been a bene benefit, if you will, for this for this Mules offense so far. It's to the ground they go. Read option. This is Ernst gonna pick up the first down and a little bit more, and that's really been the go-to so far this season as excuse me a highlands jersey came out of that with the football they're going to stay in the same direction but it's been the go-to that craftiness with the legs the read option making the smart play that's what ron riddiman likes out of colin ernst's judgment and it's plays like that that's part of the reason why this mule's offense coming off an 81 point performance yes sir and if you're the highlands Isles defense you got to be a little bit nervous because they're coming out fast D.K. Garza, again, the starting running back in the backfield. We mentioned Ariaga being the guy. And this is going to be a free play upcoming. Ernst going to his left. This is Josh Hurtado picking up what's going to be the first down. Owls got a little bit aggressive, a little bit antsy. And what should be an offsides. We'll see what the official ruling is. It looked, at least from here, that it was the white jerseys that move first. It's going to stay that way. Penalty going to be declined, so Heights again picking up the first down. A healthy gain on the play. Two plays already on Highland's side of the field, Leron. Yes, that's Josh Hurtado getting the catch. Colin Ernst, nice pass, nice time delivery. Josh Hurtado's first catch of the season. First catch of the season, yeah. First catch of the season. Had a conversation with him today before the game, and he was really looking forward to being part of the game plan, so I'm happy that he got some yardage on that catch and moved the change. Yeah, the receiving game was kind of checked out a little bit last week. 
after what was turned into such a, a ground heavy performance kind of rode the hot hand did ron riddiman sticking to the ground and uh, rode it on top of it and that led to only six passes from Colin Ernst, like we mentioned before, being pulled once the game was out of reach. But collectively, only eight passes were thrown without, uh, by Alamo Heights quarterbacks last week. And part of the reason guys like Josh Hurtado did not have a catch. Guys like Park Sunker did not have a catch because the ground was working and they stuck to it. And they found Bennett Johnson. And they found Bennett Johnson, that too. More movement. Call the play dead. This one looks like it might be in the ballpark of the heights moving. And it, judging by the way that the heights movement offense is moving back, that will be the case. Alamo Heights last week had six penalties for 53 yards. A lot of it in the first maybe quarter and a half or so. And then the game kind of played out the way it did. And in a stunning turn of events, Heights cut down on the penalties and the offense did what they did. But six for 53, one for five so far. Definitely. Uh, penalties weren't a factor, so let's hope they're not this this week. That one being a, a shot in the foot. Still first down. And again, movement on the line. This one looks more in the ballpark of offsides. It's Terry getting to the left side. 25 pushed out of bounds right outside of that. To Michael Terry's a third penalty marker. May decline this one because they got the first down, so we'll see. Michael Terry coming off of a three touchdown performance last week. One passing, one receiving, one rushing. That rushing touchdown is the offsides penalty. Will no, Ron Ridderman still trying to figure that out? Yeah. <laughs> Take the first down, coach. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Terry says, I need the stats. Yeah. The first yeah. <laughs> Rod Ridham's like, oh, I, I need to think about it a yeah. minute or two more. But Michael Terry last week, a passing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a rushing touchdown, which actually came in the form of a punt with 12 seconds left to go that he decided he was going to pocket himself and take 60-plus yards down the field yes. for a score to go into the half. So we'll see if, if Ron decided to make up his mind at some point here. I stand corrected. It wouldn't have been a first down on the Michael Terry run. It just would have put him back at the original, pat, just past the original line of scrimmage. So that may be why he's taking time thinking about what the penalty acceptance should be. Ron Ridderman can't speak to to whether or not he's much of a mathematician, but you know the numbers are calculate right there. And ultimately, the decision is take the five and call it a first and ten. Anticlimactic, I know. Very. I mean, <laughs> that took longer than the whole first quarter. It did. <laughs> All right. 4-12 to go here in this first quarter. Scoreless. Alamo Heights and Highlands continuing 14-5A Division II district play. Mules coming in at 1-0 on this season. That aforementioned win over Brackenridge. Highlands a loss last week to McCollum of 54-25, 54-26. Uh, final. First time this year we have seen five receivers full set right there. And across the middle he goes. That is Trip Johnson taken down. We'll see where they spot it. Trip Johnson taken down just outside the goal line. They're going to talk about it again. Offsides on Highlands. Trip Johnson making his first trip to the end zone. All right, so they are going to give him the six. So Trip Johnson, first touchdown of the season for the sophomore, used primarily as a kick returner, punt returner so far this season, but Johnson gets his first grab. And Johnson puts Heights on the board here at the 350 mark of this first quarter's Bogus's kick is through the uprights. Good, seven nothing, Alamo Heights takes the advantage. That's a, an impressive drive by Alamo Heights, and it's kind of like, I feel like it's deja vu. Right? Last week, it was seven zero first quarter, and the game took a, took its time. Um, this this week, Highlands, you know, drained the clock a little bit with their running game. We'll see what they come up and respond with on this drive, because this may be the drive that sets the tone for their whole 
game tonight. And if it's not producing points, it may be a long night. That's a solid catch by Trip Johnson. Not the greatest of throws, but he made that look easy, extending the entirety of that 5 9 160 frame to put Heights on top. 7 0 here in the first quarter of game three of the season as Alamo Heights tries to move to 3 0 on this young season. Continuing district play for head coach Ron Riddim in his fourth season with the Mules. Off the feeling Mules very confident, six. I would imagine, after this start talking to him, uh, you and I did Henry before this matchup uh, yesterday. He's excited. He's excited about this team right Back now, and he's excited in that he thinks there's still a lot of room to grow, and understandably so. Understandably so, because this was the team last week that, of course, put up 81 as the kickoff's going to go through the back of the end zone. I don't think a white jersey Kickoff touched that. The end zone for a touchback. Yeah, it's going to be a touchback, so spot the ball uh, at the 20 upcoming. But Ron Ritterman is feeling tremendously optimistic, and again, understandably so. And this is with a team that has not looked particularly great defensively, and I think that's part of the reason it sparked the optimism for him, was that defensively, while they pitched a shutout last week, the week before they were inconsistent, but given that they shut a team out after allowing 40-plus, it's obviously trending the right direction, what you want to see, and part of the reason, again, Rod Ridham is feeling very good with this team standing right now. Well, I can share in that excitement because one thing, one thing about this team, it's youthful, right? And when you're a coach that's been dealing with older guys, you don't always get to be a teacher. So he gets to teach, the youthfulness gets to show itself, to show the growth, and that's always fun. Carry number six for Rodriguez. Number three, Rodriguez. Already a hard Rodriguez ball work. Here we go. He's got a six-yard gainer. Let's see if this propels their drive. Or if the Alamo, Alamo Heights Mules defense can bow up and, and shut this down. Got across midfield last drive, only to stall out and lead to a punt that was spotted at the Heights 44-yard line. Romeo Garza so far on the season, 11 of 19, 179. Two touchdowns, or that was last week, I should say. Two touchdowns and a pair of interceptions against McCollum Cowboys. Well, Talk about them a little bit later on. Back to Rodriguez. Going to be short of the marker. Interesting so far, Ron. Hasn't been a whole lot of Gaskin, but feeling confident with what they've three, seen Mateo out of Mateo Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Seven touches so far at this point. Um, I, I was just about to ask it's you, how many touches do you think he's going to get tonight? No. Because if this is their game plan, I don't know if it's going to be enough because you're going to drain the clock. But if you don't get first downs, you don't get touchdowns, you see how fast that mule's offense strikes. And it's back to the ground. They oh. go, and right on cue, the Mules' defense sniffs it out again. That's Fernando Rivera, the nose tackle. That was an impressive play by Fernando, getting that backfield and shutting down that run. And guess what? We're back to a, a long distance here. It's third down and long, approximately third down and 13. So, I'm sorry, third down and five, and we'll see if um, – if they rip out the, the pass, third down to four. Yeah, back to the ground again and again. Man, this Alamo Heights defense calling it out, sniffing it out once again Lost at that line brain. of scrimmage. All blue jerseys forcing a turnover on downs. Ron, usually you like the aggressiveness, usually. So that was, no, that was, excuse me, I said that was fourth down, it was they third were, down. They were messing yeah. with the chains over there. So yeah. That's why it, was, it, looked, it was third, then it was fourth, then it was third. <laughs> I got tripped up myself, so I understand. Yeah, all right, so we're at, yeah, there we go. <laughs> if you're Highlands right now, you can't let this negative momentum. Fuels begin the drive first and 10 from the Owl 31-yard line. Hurt you. Um, actually, that was fourth down. I don't know if you're confused. I'm confused. <laughs> Do you know it's National Officials Day today? It, you know, they're on cue. <laughs> because right now, I could have sworn it was fourth down. Why would you have gone for it on fourth down on your side of the 50? Wow, that's that was a bold move. 
It's been a weird start to this game. So far, yeah. <laughs> it's been a weird start. They're to testing this game. our metal. Up. Oh, Ertz gonna come out, gonna keep it. Flag on the play. Ertz inside the ten, the five. Touchdown, Alamo Heights. Number ten, Colin Ertz. The only flag that should be on this play is because Touchdown. the chain game got these downs mixed up. <laughs> and I don't know if Highlands had twelve men on the field. If Alamo Heights held. We'll see. Could have been in the area of holding behind the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the field. Nope, they're judging by Ernst's reaction. Put the points on the board once again. So Colin Ernst, another rushing touchdown. 34-yard touchdown score off the read option. So make it 13 to nothing. Chance to make it a two-advantage lead or two-touchdown uh, two lead. We should say that's I think collectively. Right? Yeah, it's been a little all over the place for everyone. Yeah, so but that, that's literally like for, you <laughs> yeah. know, it was days of last week. We scored bang, bang quick. And now we have a minute 49 left in the fourth in the first quarter. And it's, it just gets you thinking, like, what can Highlands do on this next possession to us reestablish themselves? Yeah, it feels like that last pro lap last possession there is the extra point is through. Felt like they kind of outsmarted themselves and got a little too cute. Or were they confused by the Or were they confused by the downage too? The down a distance too. That could have been. I wouldn't blame them if they were. I mean there was a strong argument for that. But nonetheless, uh Alma Heights Mills capitalized and they struck quickly, one play and a touch. Colin Ernst for the touchdown, so special teams out on the field again. Uh if you're Highlands, you're hoping for a big play return on this kickoff. And if you're on my Heights Mules, you're hoping to uh, either pin them deep and play it again. Colin Ernst's fourth rush, rushing touchdown of the season had one week one, two last week. And so that number four on this 2023 campaign. All right, so let's reset here a little bit because it's been... I don't want to say it all over the place because it's been a, that, that is kind of a condescending sense of the word, but but all right. So Alamo Heights coming in at two and zero on this young season, trying to move to three and zero against an zero and two Highlands team. That's back to return it both Gaskin and Rodriguez as Rodriguez trying to get it to Gaskin. Ball is loose. It looks like a white jersey. Gaskin fell on top of it. Four, he Willie did. The so it will be Owl Owl's football, but there you go. And that, that's part of the reason, I'm sure. If we're seeing it from up here, you know, line. Coach Landeros down there is seeing it as well. Correct. Kind of getting a little too creative for their own good. Sometimes keeping things simple, stupid is the best method, especially when you're down 14. Getting tricky sometimes isn't the move. So really, we'll see. Go ahead. I really like what I saw from the Alamo Heights Mules defense last series. They're no longer intimidated by the run. They're getting in their, their run fits. So if you're a Highlands, do you start leaning on the pass and see if you can catch something deep, whether it's a penalty or the ball? But right now, you may have to stray away from the run. Yeah, starting to get in a little bit of a dangerous territory here with this early disadvantage that they're at. They go to the backfield and another miscommunication in the backfield. Gaskin's gonna have to improvise here and he's gonna get past the line of scrimmage. That could have been a whole lot worse, but that's a product of having one of the best playmakers in the, in the district to bail you out of situations like that. And what could have been a loss of five yards plus is going to turn into a gain of two. Man, want to talk about break in case of emergency. Gaskin doing what he does. That was definitely a disastrous to heroic moment for Highlands. <laughs> I almost couldn't believe that that was happening. Willie Gaskin, first team do it all last season, likely trending that same way again through the first two games of the season and again a miscommunication and Gaskin this time nobody home that Alamo Heights defensive line has been great so far this evening it seems like they're having trouble with the exchanges they're either too far apart or going in the wrong direction I don't know if this is the youthfulness of Romero or what's happening but it's been consistent it hasn't been just every now and again it's been very consistent that's the third time we've already seen some semblance of a miscommunication on a handoff that we've seen through 
two and we'll call it half of a possession right now for the Owls on a third down and eight upcoming. Right now is a big play for Romero. Garza, he has to step up big here as a freshman. Three receiver set out there. It's Rodriguez on the ground again. He's not going to pick up the eight he needed. Positive game, but Alamo Heights the right there, right there on top of it, despite Number bringing Henry the extra two DBs out it's there. So make it a fourth down. Upcoming Owls off to punt. Timeout. Yeah, we got a timeout on the field the as half. we approach the inside 22nd mark, 19 Once seconds again, to go left in this first quarter of play. If you're just joining us, thank you for hanging out with us on this Friday evening here at Harry B. Orham Stadium along with LaRon Fields, Taj Young on the sidelines. Casey Vieira here with you. Alma Heights trying to go to 3-0 on this 2023 campaign. Do you think that timeout was strategic or just... I mean, that's odd. With 19 seconds left, you want to take score as many can, points you can in the quarter. Uh, set up a nice return here. This first quarter has been strange, so I don't, I, I, I don't have an answer for that question. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm, I'm just watching. You know, <laughs> Coach Coach Ritterman's having a nice conversation over there with the officiating crew. At this rate, after this first quarter, I'm not entirely sure what to expect the rest of the way. <laughs> so that was the unobvious. Let's go with the obvious. Um, Highlands, I was offense. That was very conservative. And that's kind of concerning knowing that we're about to get the ball back. And a punt that goes straight up and basically straight down, backs up the other direction, and it's going to go out well into Mules plus territory. And about the 25-yard line is where they're going to spot it. So Alamo Heights catching a break right there, and they're going to take over. Yeah, at about the 25-yard line as we hit the 17-second mark here in the first quarter. Casey, I'm not a math major, but I think our starting field position today has not totaled 100 yards of just starting position. Uh, we started at the, what, 45? The 40, yeah, it was the, the 44. 35, the 30. and now we're at the 20. I think if they score here, that would be, that would hit 100. Yeah, but th that's what's crazy is like, if you're Highland, you, you're feeding right into the machine that is the mules. Uh, you you got to find a better way to get the ball down the field. And that punt said return to sender. So let's see what they do on this possession. Yeah, Ernst back out there. He's going to go to Terry. End around. Here comes Heights. It's Trip Johnson once again all the way down at the 10. He's got a blocker. Ernst inside the 10-yard line just outside the 5. <laughs> Look at Colin Ernst leading the blocking, leading the charge. Going to pick up. The first down and then some to take it inside the 10 yard line, inside the red zone. Trip Johnson been the guy they've been calling on early in this first quarter, been paying dividends for this Mules team. Uh, yeah, Trip Johnson is growing up tonight and it's lovely to see because he's a young guy and when you can start getting these young guys on the field making plays, it makes your team that much better. Let's see if they snap the ball with six seconds left to go here in this first so. quarter. They will. One more play. It goes to Terry to the left side. Going to walk in. Touchdown, Alamo Heights. It's a 20 to Michael nothing lead. Terry Michael Terry, another game. rushing touchdown. The touchdown. Mules in full control here after one quarter. Um, I like to say cruise control. Like most time we say grown men run, but he just was cruising, right? It's a <laughs> untouched, strutted in. 20 points in the first quarter, extra point pending. I think that the Redder would be happy with what he sees so far from the defense and the offense. Generally speaking, 20 points after the first quarter of play will make a coach happy. I would operate under that assumption. It'll I'm, make one coach happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. One coach happy. Extra points by Anderson. And with Martin that, the extra good. point is good. 
21 to nothing is your score through one and quarter the of the play. Quarter, Mules leading Highlands by that zero. three touchdown advantage along with Laron Fields. My name's Casey Vieira, third member of our broadcast team. Taj Young has more for us down on the sidelines. Hey, Taj. Sean Reno, flexing the feet. Sean Reno, big into his shoe. Number 31, Linus Flores to kick off for Alamo Heights. Just shy. Of the 20s, the mule special three, teams continues with the return. Number 24, to do Alex what Herb. they do. Another stop, starting the field position inside the opposition's 20, 20 yard line, and more of the same. So, an offensive showing that last possession led to Coach Landero is playing a little bit more conservatively on a third and long, going back to the ground, figuratively and literally hunting away the possession. But for the first time, it seems like this season, it seems like Romeo Garza has kind of, you know, I don't want to play the narrative of looked like a freshman, but has looked a little bit like a freshman, showed the youth a little bit as to the ground. This is Gaskin. Gaskin the ball carrier. 52 the ground game has looked promising. The question is, can it sustain? Um, final getting good yards right down. now, it's Second and five. Highlands coming into this new season under Coach Landeros. While trying to run a bit more of a spread, while not totally abandoning the run, they did lose two all-district receivers last season. First teamer was D'Anthony Johnson. Kennedy Jackson was a second-team all-district wide receiver this is back to the ground a read option again a little bit of a hesitation and again the owls pay for it gaskin taken down by a host of mules in the backfield it's interesting because it doesn't you you watch this highlands offense and you see the playmakers it's just feels like a little thing the little things the miscommunications something like that and when you're at this level if it's just that Split second hesitation, it's going to be costly. I and here it is, to, a third and five upcoming. I also wonder, like, we're not, they're not getting their playmakers in space, right? Um, if you're, if you're Highlands, Mateo Garza is gashing the, the, the defense, William right? Riggs but on the perimeter, the no the action's Mills. been there. We haven't seen him throw it's a pass towards the, even a swing pass. Uh, you know, we saw the screen come underneath and. Here we are again at fourth down and four. So either the punter's going to get a workout and Trip Johnson's going to get a workout, or at some point you're going to just let let it hang loose in your highlands and, and take more chances. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> you said it. You said it your best yourself. <laughs> yeah, you, you said it best yourself. Uh, I, Back deep to receive the at this point, you have nothing to lose, right? You're no, no, no. Zero, so try something different. Uh -oh. As back to punt, this is Perez Torres. Better than the last punt that he had as Johnson battles the sky. He's going to take it up across midfield. He's got some blue jerseys blocking with him all the way just outside the 30-yard line. Trip Johnson continues to make an impact 
in this first half. A touchdown catch, a big run on an end around, and now a solid return all the way inside the 35-yard line. Very good return. That was a nice punt. Like, that punt was on the angle. Trip had to go find it, get it. He had good help on his uh, from blocking from his receivers down the field. And he, he turned it into a, a positive game for the Mules. And now, again, they're starting score from around the at district. the 30 the special teams has been fantastic. No other way to put it the they've first two special. weeks. Of the, they've been special. Out to their names. That, that teams. They have played the part of of a team that you want to be special. And the special teams unit has <laughs> done exactly that. These are the quips that you tune in for. Yes, indeed. Not the, the football that the Mules have been playing very well. Is Ertz going to use the arm, finding... Michael Terry make that park soccer his first catch of the day his first catch in a game and change had two touchdowns opening night two weeks ago from today that a big time grab taking it all the way down to the 10 a number that wasn't called last week but pretty good reassurance to have right there Laron and put it at the six yard line another red zone opportunity upcoming love the play call roll left got parks screaming across the field and uh, Colin Ertz this week was more accurate on his pass. You see he kind of settled down, hit Parks in stride, and that's a first because most time when Colin Ertz throws a Parks, he misses the first catch. This time he connected. So it's down to the six they go. Owls bringing pressure, going up top to Terry as Ernst. Nobody uh, home. It will be a second down and goal from the six up coming for play. Alamo Heights. Working on this 21 to nothing lead here at the 920 mark. You mentioned Colin Ertz throwing on the move a little bit. It felt like last week that was one of the few criticisms, I say criticisms a little bit loosely, that you could offer of his performance was that it seemed like that was going to be one of those things that's going to come with time, throwing on the move, throwing on the run, because he does a whole lot of running. Mm hmm and you saw it right there. That was probably collectively the best, one of the best passes he's had all season. Definitely. So we'll see what they have on second and six. Drawn up, Michael Terry is the call. Going to pick up a couple yards, put it at the four-yard line. Third and goal from the four on deck for Heights. I don't know if you're aware of this, but on that last play that they threw, attempted to throw it to Michael Terry, they have Willie Gaskin at cornerback, so he is playing both ways, and they've got him out there. So that's very intriguing. He's trying to, you know, do his best for his team and, and be that guy. Yeah, they have a few guys who they like to throw out there, crossover players, to use Ron Riddiman's terminology. Yeah. Mateo Rodriguez, they put him at safety. Gaskin, like you said, their punter, Albert Perez Torres, also primarily when he's not punting, they use him at one of the two safety positions. Third down and goal from the four, Terry not a whole lot going on, and we'll see Ron Riddiman, what he decides to do on a fourth and goal from the four upcoming. Highland doing, Highland's doing a good job sniffing it out. Hey, that's that's the first positive of the game. Well, not the first. That's, a, that's the first positive in a while for Highlands. Their defense got to stop in the red zone. You got to hang your hat on that if you're the D coordinator, if you're the O coordinator, if you're the head coach. When they come on that field, give them a big high five and a pat on the back saying, good job, fellas. So on comes Linus, Linus Flores here, an interesting antidote to put here as the 30, 21-yard field goal, excuse me, is up and good, making it 24 okay, to nothing. That field goal, Aron, was his first field goal attempt of the season. Yes, sir. He had previously gone 13 of 13 on extra points, but had yet to attempt a field goal this season. So for collectively, 14 of 14 doing his job as a kicker but his first field goal make in as many tries the 21 yard score is good so alamo heights 24 highlands nothing and maybe that stop on the defensive end for highlands could be something that they need a little bit of you know you take the moral victories to try to make this game competitive again and could that be a more of it moral victory to try to wake things up on the other side of the football We'll definitely find out here after this uh, kickoff return. This could also be another juice booster as you're relating to. Uh, I will say this. 
that's like the first field goal I've seen Alan Wild Heights kick in two years. Last year, we would have gone for it, scored a touchdown. I was going to say, do you have numbers to document this? I don't have any. That sounds like a very unofficial <laughs> stat. It, it's, it, from my own eyes, right? Like okay. I, I'm not going to say it's the truth, but it's close there. But I t I'm saying that because I had to eat the ball last year. And I would ask, is Coach ever going to let you kick a field goal? <laughs> Never the kick a field goal. I asked Linus Flores today, is Coach going to let you kick a field goal? And he said, we're going to work on it. And today they did. Bouncing kick going to go out of the back of the end zone, call it a touchback. Uh, Highland's going to take over at the 25-yard line upcoming. And we'll see what the Owls can bring to the because table the here. Yeah, I think the scouting back. report coming in, we talked about it, was that they have playmakers. They have a lot of guys who could do the positive things, but it's the inability to convert on the third down. Slight miscommunications. The turnovers, nine turnovers in two days, and you can understand the reason for that 0-2 mark at this point. But, hey, so why far, we have two and a half quarters left of football, right? So far, turnover game, not affecting me. Just like you said, the miscues, uh, not capitalizing. They get a good run on first down, and they somehow go backwards on second and third down. So let's see what they do here to clean that up. Willie Gaskins lined up out left. I think this is... Going to be intriguing. They got them stacked. They got, they've got him recognized. As Garza looks to his right, batted down at the line of scrimmage. And Lauren Christensen was on his knees and almost made the play on that, trying to fend off a block on the ground. Garza's pass incomplete. Christensen's a tall guy, so even on his knees, he's still about 5'10". <laughs> yeah, that rush coming and causing more havoc. Line, the offensive, excuse me, defensive end. line so far. This is probably the best it's looked so far this season. Would you agree? I would agree. I mean, this the is front the seven collectively. Collectively. I mean, we got to throw one week one out somewhat because that was the first week that they've ever played together. Last week they looked good. This week they're looking good. So they're, they're growing into their skin. Well, if I include week one, that shows the high, bigger room for growth. Well, yeah, definitely. I'm just yeah. saying, like, if you took the stats, you'd think we were crazy. If anything, it's more complimentary that I include week one. I agree. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> Three receiver set up coming. It's back to Rodriguez and right on cue. That front seven to doing its job. Taking him down. Going to be a loss. Another loss on the play. About Mateo four, maybe Rodriguez five for a third down and long upcoming. Five. That front Fernando seven Rivera looking a little bit something like Rivera. this. Mention Florin Christensen, right. William Riggs, Fernando Rivera, and Cortland Hanna. It's They're the down linemen. Down. The linebackers, Ryan Stetson, Patrick Ariaga more in the middle today or strong side and Joseph DePerrier getting his first career start the junior in place of Will Broderick as a third and 14 coming in a four receiver set as it's to the ground Rodriguez at the 25 just shy of the 30 on the third and 14 gonna be far short of the marker the presumably Walker. another Owls punt Upcoming defense doing a good job holding its ground that possession for the mules. Another thing to point out you see that they're doing a lot of shuffling in and out on the D line, so they're getting a lot of reps for a lot of people. Um, and in that case, right now, it look, looked look like we went a little lighter on the line. And Highlands was able to get some yards, not enough for a first down, so we are at fourth down again. The leery of the fake punt. Back to punt for the Owls. Number 14, Tripp Johnson. From the 29. Be leery from here. <laughs> hey, a, a desperate man with no money is a desperate man with no money. I was about to say if he if he faked that, if he faked that, I, I would have said, Laurent, just go go to your nearest gas station, get this scratch off, man, because this is your night and this is Trip Johnson's night. Down to the twenty-five, cuts back outside. Johnson again. Like I said, maybe Johnson they should have faked the put the because that Trip Johnson just hit his first cut return. For a touchdown. The Trip Johnson takeover game tonight at Harry B. Orem Stadium. His second touchdown of the day. 30 to nothing, Alamo Heights. And again, this is what we saw last week. Can do no wrong at this point of the season. Looking at the replay, a fantastic job by those blue jerseys getting up the field. Look at that. Five blue jerseys creating that space for number 14, the sophomore, to go the distance. Credit to the special teams. Yeah, Credit to this height special team. They're doing the job and they're doing it, doing it again. Third consecutive game with a punt or kicking or a touch or a punt or kick taken back. 
for a score. And that time, Trip Johnson doing the job. So 5.51 left to go here in this first half of play here at Her <laughs> Mules tried to go to 3-0 on the season, 2-0 in 14-5A District 2 or Division 2 play. Flores to kick off for the Mules. Gaskin and Rodriguez back deep for the Owls. As off the one hop, this is Rodriguez again at the 10. Rodriguez running out of real estate at Alamo Heights, tracking him down. Ball going to be spotted inside the 10-yard line. Rodriguez with the as the Mules just hustling again, making the hustle plays. And another one today, along with Laurent Fields. My name's Casey Vieira. Third member of our broadcast team is Taj Young on, this ch on the sideline. We'll check in with Taj. Hey, Taj. I am feel right now I'm in here in the sidelines in the office. Even though we're up right now from me, the, the vibe still means that. The, the vibe means that, that they need uh, to do more work. They still seem to be very focused to get this win tonight. Now back to you, Casey and Milan. Made the play. Wow, Willie Gaskin again showing why he is one of the best in the district. First time in a while we've seen a positive gainer like that go the Owls way. And who else? Number four making the plays. That was a big time throw and a big time catch by Willie Gaskin. You need to see more of that. Again, put the pressure on the defense, make them make plays. He was bracketed and he still was able to uh, make that completion. Willie Gaskin also a very much a standout basketball player for this Highlands Owls team. Was also an all district, uh, an all district guard this past season. As throw first down incomplete. I was looking over Garza was for Gaskin once again, coming off of a 146 yard all purpose performance. Second down. Did Gaskin in a, a year which he had just shy of 1800 all purpose last season, a 22 touchdown performance. That incompletion stops the clock, so this is a very crucial second and 10. I would look for a run here to get that clock turned in and hopefully get some yards. Yeah, after the 28-yard pickup on the Gaskin catch, they spread it out once again. Two receivers, two Garza's left. Got Gaston, Gaskin to his right, and across the middle, they do go at the 40-yard line. A positive gainer getting his first touch Garza's pass is on the day. That Jose is Jose Villasanza making the grab. Going to be short of the marker. Pickup of about seven. We will call it a third and three from it's the 42. Coming. Very, down. very good connection here from the quarterback to receiver. Uh, right now they're putting in a achievable first down opportunity, and it kind of makes you ask the question: Why didn't they do this earlier? They had two third down conversions on their opening drive. Did Highlands haven't converted a third down since then? And we'll see how they fare on this drive. It's back to Via Sansa they go. We'll see where they spot it. Looks like he has it, and he does. So Jose Via Sansa giving this team, this Highlands squad, their second first down on the drive. The junior captain getting his number called, and helping his guys out. Yeah, definitely, but. Romeo Garza is looking sharp on this drive the, uh, with the uh, one errant throw, but, you know, the throw to Gaskin, the to the uh, Bill Santa, they're moving the chains, and they're not doing it just running the ball. So we approach the four-minute mark in this first half. As
as Garza, two-step drop, gonna look deep, has a man, and nearly a fantastic catch by Jeremiah McCain. He beat the DB, had space, just couldn't haul it in. Fingertips, got his fingers on it, just a little bit too much on the Garza side of things. But McCain had a man beat and probably would have gone the distance. Yeah, Blake Killian there was out of position. He got beat deep. Um, luckily, like you said, it was a finger touch, finger touch, fingertip touch grab, and couldn't haul it in. Jeremiah McCain, a sophomore wide receiver on this squad. They start only one senior receiver, if you want to call it Gaskin that a receiver more so. Like we said, your classic athlete by definition. They start. McCain, who's a sophomore, and then two other junior receivers as Garza again going to go to his left. Let's hit as he throws. Passes incomplete. Getting in Lauren Passes Christensen. A significant size advantage <laughs> over <laughs> the freshman quarterback. What's the uh, movie with uh, Schwarzenegger and DeVito? Like uh, Big Little? or I forgot what oh, it was called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, what, yeah. That That's like. what that was. Yes. Well, it, here's what's funny. Uh, Highlands, they got comfortable throwing. That one was a little bit greedy. Nothing was there. The defense did a great job of sniffing out the route. Albert Perez Torres shaking up on the play. So it would be a third down and 10 coming for Highlands. Already picking up two it's first downs on this drive. A little down. bit of momentum. The most momentum we've seen them have since their opening drive. And again, they're showing a set. Oh, they're now they're going to spread it out. It looked like they were going to go back to the ground one more time. They still may with this formation. Our DBs are backed up a good 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Uh-oh. What's going backwards? And moving it back the other way. Yeah. All Delay right. Here we go. Shoot ourselves the foot again. About five yards. Yep. Back it up. False start penalty. It's Week one. 12 penalties for 105 yards. That's what Highland's... Highlands' report card read. That was cut down to the last week's four for 35 yards. So trending in that direction in a positive sense, but have struggled a little bit on that front tonight. So it'll be a third and 15 upcoming for Garza. He's going to look deep, throw deep, battling for it. An incomplete flag on the play. Battling for it was Via Sansa again one more time. We'll see who they call it on in the area of pass interference, but from up here, it looks like it's going to be a mule. Yeah, it looks like it's on Oliver Duff, and um, it was weird coverage. It wasn't a catchable ball, but it's high school, and it's National <laughs> Officials Day. So when you want to be in the spotlight, what do you do best? You throw some laundry. <laughs> LaRon came bearing gifts today. <laughs> Got to get ready for that season to be giving. <laughs> It'll be first and 10 for the Owls from the Alamo Heights 44. So put the ball at the 44-yard line for this first and 10 upcoming. The 312 mark we we're at. Highlands trying to get some offensive positivity going on before this halftime break. And the first time they've been on the Heights side of the field again since that opening possession. Gaskin now in the backfield. Gars is going to look to him. Gaskin at his back to the Ooh. football. Just got it out a little bit too early. Garza's too low and too early. Too low, too early, but that Heights really defense did a good job picking him up out of the backfield. If he had he caught that, I don't know how far he would have gotten. It would have so been a positive game at the least. It would have been a positive game at the least. But what, what's funny is they're being aggressive right now. It's like this is how you start a game, right? Not get down by 31 and then uh, go after. But I will say it's also helping our DBs because they haven't seen as much action in pass action, right? And next week, not to look too far ahead because uh, we're only in the first half, but next week's team, McCullum, they can throw the ball. They have a quarterback that actually can sling with receivers. So this mm -hmm. is a good test for our back. Garza again got a pair of blue jerseys coming his way, throws it up, nearly intercepted. That was Max Bacon coming in, getting a hand on the football. So Jordan Ricker dialing up a little bit of Garza's pressure on the freshman quarterback, doing its job, nearly Max leading Bacon. to Garza's fourth interception of the season, going to bring about a third and long upcoming. It's third down.
So a three receiver set for Highlands as Garza, low snap, gets it off in time, intercepted. Henry Bruston, or Bruton making the grab. Yeah, Henry Bruton making the grab. The junior defensive back coming on for a little bit of extra help in these passing situations and tallying a positive side on the ledger. Hey, you talked about it. You wanted to see the DBs get tested. There you go. Yeah, you, you love to see that. You love to see your DBs get tested. Get them comfortable because as the season goes on, you do not want to be the weakest link. And then you have teams that are running against you. Well, your down linemen and your backers, they get all the work. And DBs get, uh, you know, no work. And, and that could be fruitful down the line if they get this work in tonight. Yeah, tenth turnover of the season for Highlands as Ernst going to roll out, look to his left, throws left. Terry picking up the first down, going to be a gain of about 15, oh, if not pass. more. So lead. move the chains inside of three minutes. Move the Mules the offense chains. continues That's to do Mule. what they first have down. been doing. Ron Wittemann has been getting his quarterback, his quarterback out running and moving a little bit in the sense of throwing on the move, and it's been working. Yes, it has been. And right now they're in the two-minute offense, so he's going to probably be able to move some more, whether it be a run-pass option, DK guards out the backfield, all things are on the table. Yeah, Ernst so far already more completions than last week. Movement on the line, no flags. Going to go shallow they do out of the backfield. This is DK Garza. See you later. DK, TD, 37-0 Alamo Heights. I said the two-minute offense, right? You did. That, that looked like it took 20 seconds. So... DK guards it to the house. Shout out to him. He turned on the Jets. Nice play design by the offense coordinator, Mike Branco, to uh, get the ball down the field in a hurry. One thing I would say what I like about this year's team, we talked about the youthfulness. I can see why Ron Miller was excited, excited. You're showing more different looks on tape this year than you did last year, and you had more talent, per se, right, the known talent. This year, they can, they can hit you in different ways, and it's just not all about Mike Terry, who's had a quiet night tonight. Not that he's not working, but just that – other people have stepped Flores up to take over that, that man. Flores' extra point is good. Extra oh, point is good. 38 to nothing. Alamo Heights. Alamo That's a great point you bring up. Is that this offense so far has been largely unpredictable. And so much of the question marks coming into this season Once for this again, Alamo Heights team was this Michael Terry, HD. dot, 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 and who? And who? And who else? And that was kind of one of the things that Ron Ritterman talked about here. He was saying, you know what, I can understand why people feel that way. I can understand why people feel that way because nobody else has really stepped up and proven themselves yet. Well, they hadn't had the chance, right? I mean, and they hadn't had the chance. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. like they didn't want to. It was just, you know, hey, now it's your time to shine and the lights are on, will you? And they have. <laughs> they have. <laughs> and they have. DK Garza, touchdown. First receiving touchdown of the year for the sophomore, 5'9", 168, getting his second straight start in the backfield for this Alamo Heights offense. So the passing TD for Ernst, that is, is his now Number fifth four, of the season, three, second of the day. This is Rodriguez on the return, takes it up past the 15, scampering just outside of the 20, where he's taken down from there. Rodriguez As we hit the just outside of the two Alex minute mark, 207 left to go Alex. here in the second quarter of play here from Harry B. Orem Stadium. Along with Laron Fields, my name is Casey Vieira. Third member of our broadcast team is Taj Young. We'll check out. We'll check in with him on the sidelines. Hey, Tosh. Tosh, go. Yeah, come on. We're live now. Uh, here with Manny Harris, an alumni. Now, Manny, how's it feel to be back at my Heights? Feels great, man. I. Uh, it's weird to say that I'm an alumni because I feel like just like yesterday, you know, I was just playing with these guys. But now I'm just getting to watch them and see the coaches. I mean, it's honestly kind of sad. Honestly, that's the best way I think I can put it. Because I'm seeing these coaches. I had a connection with them. And they just were a part of our lives. And now they're just like, you know, 
not there anymore. So, but it's encouraging to see them work with these new guys. It's awesome. All right, thanks so much for being here. All right, back to you, KC from the alumni himself. Here, wait for half time. All right, am I level? Am I level? All right, tell me when I'm on air. Kicking towards the clock. They're gonna kick towards the clock. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'm here with Coach Ridden right now. Now, Coach, you're, le you're leading right now. Uh, how do you feeling about how your offense has been performing tonight? Our offense has really done a good job capitalizing on, on short fields and, and getting the ball in the end zone. We got some other things we got to clean up and just be a little more aggressive uh, in the second. Aggressive, more physical, uh, just to make sure that those five yard gains become two yard gains. And when we have the ball, that extends those, those plays as well. All right, now thank you, Coach Ritterman. Appreciate hey, it. Thank good luck in the second half. All right, right now we're, we're going to see him, see how they perform in the second half. I'm Taj Young. Back to you, Casey and LaRon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now presenting your pride of the southeast side, the Highlands Mighty Owl Band and Highlands High Steppers. The band is under the direction of On this season, in full control over Highlands. You are watching Alamo Heights Football, a production of AH Sports Media.
of the week is freshman Ariana Cantu. Pep captain is sophomore Juliana Morales. Pep co-captain captains are sophomore Ruby Espicia and sophomore Caleria Swain. Pep squad is directed by coach Alicia. Cheerleader of the week is cheer captain senior Miranda Gitron. Cheer is directed by Jasmine Castaneda. Dancer of the week is senior Lauren Calario. Your brigade lieutenant colonel is senior Beatrice Caballero and brigade colonel junior Gracie Salinas. Tonight, the national award-winning Highlands High Steppers are performing a jazzy kick to applaud. Tonight, the band will be performing a portion of their 2023 UIL show entitled Nevermore. Our show this year will paint a picture of the ever-famous Edgar Allan Poe poem called The Raven. Songs featured tonight are Twisted Nerve by Herman, Cello Concerto in B Minor by Dvorak, Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, and Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Soloists for the band will be Ruby Akala, Sylvia Solis, Cherry Arrivalo, Ryan Garza, and Isaiah Vigil. So sit back and enjoy the Mighty Owl Band as they perform Nevermore.
The drum majors for the band are Isaiah Vigil, head drum major, and the assistant is Pablo Segovia. The band member of the week goes to Morgan Sequente. Great job, Morgan. Section of the week goes to the tuba. We would like to thank our principal, Dr. Pruitt, and her admin team, Ms. Mann, Ms. Caldwell, and Mr. De La Pena, Mr. Woodler, and Ms. Santana for your unconditional support. Thank you to our teachers and staff for your continued support at Highlands. We would also like to thank the band boosters and alumni for the support and dedication to the band program. Finally, to all of the incredible OWL fans and of course our amazing OWL band families. Go OWLs! Ladies and gentlemen, the Alamo Heights Independent School District is proud to present the 2023-2024 Mighty Mule Marching Band and the Alamo Heights High School Spurs Dance Team. The Mighty Mule Band is under the field leadership of drum majors Caroline Quartz and Ava Rocha. The 2023-2024 Alamo Heights Cheer Captains are Carrie Duncan, Connolly Kate Love, and Elizabeth Baker. Co-captains are Margaret Hayden and Sophia Remolina. The cheer coach is Taylor Bailey. Cheerleaders of the week are Fred Browning, JD, Emma Wufkowitz, and Varsity Sophie Sutherland. Welcome the award-winning Alamo Heights Spurs dance team under the direction of Melissa and Aldo. The 2023-2024 Spurs are led on the field by Colonel Francie Dutcher, Lieutenant Colonel Avi Espinero, and Caitlin Mason, Lieutenant Mariah Barner, and line leader Madison Richie. The Spurs of the week are Audrey Ibato and Juliet Gray. Now sit back and relax as the Spurs and the Mighty Mule Band twirler Piper Smith perform their routine to the Donna Summer Classic, Hot Stuff. The Mighty Mule Band would like to recognize the following members for their hard work and dedication this week. Band members of the week are Ryan Pollock and Jack Kinsey. Color Guard member of the week is Charlotte Gay. And our section of the week is our Sousaphone section. Tonight, the Mighty Mule Band will perform the first three parts of their competition marching show entitled Primary Sources. Tonight's performance features soloists Sophia Fuentes on flute, Julia Mendoza on oboe, Lauren Cicciolli on flute, and the saxophone quartet featuring Christopher Caprio Walker, Andy Lee, Raul Villarreal, and Andreas Gonzalez.
Let's stand for the Alamo Heights fight song.
football to commence the second half. I think you and I would probably both agree as it pertains to Colin Ernst. That's probably the best he's looked throwing the football Definitely. so far this year. He's cleaned up the mechanics, and that's the key. Uh, as we said, each week you want to get better. You want your quarterback to grow. You want your whole team to grow and get better. And tonight's no different as they are trying to go 2-0 and oh on uh, the season in district play. So they're so far they're on track to do that. Um, it's good to see another person step up like Trip Johnson. It's been refreshing. And, and all you can ask for is uh, – is for that type of production. Yeah, as it pertains to starters, you look at guys who have had touchdowns so far this season, and just about every position player who is a starter has scored so far. Oh, I, I didn't even mention DK Garza. He had a touchdown mixed in there as he well did. in that first half. Uh, did the sophomore. So you're looking at you had eight different touchdown scores last week. So now you have nine with Trip Johnson. So that would make it, if I'm doing my math correctly, already nine players who have scored a touchdown so far this year for Alamo. Ten, excuse me, ten players who have scored a touchdown so far this year for Alamo Heights. That is, that is answering the question of Michael Terry and who else? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we asked and they've answered, and that's what you want. The only person we're missing to getting on the pay dirt is Josh Mercado. Did he get in? Did he get a touchdown tonight? He did not, no. So he's the only receiver that, that we're looking for. He got his first catch tonight, so that's progression, right? Uh, to your point, it's it's option city for Colin Ernst. If it's not his legs, if it's not Michael Terry, it could be a Park Zonker, Trip Johnson. It could be a Josh Rapato. It could be a Bennett Johnson, who's not kind of passed in tonight's game. But also, right, the challenge is they've been getting great field position. It's kind of hard to spread the wealth on a series when you're scoring you on only one have or two plays. Yards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Like, yeah. You, you can't throw it to four different receivers if you're scoring on a DK Garza 60 yard screen pass touchdown or a Colin Ernst 50 yard run or a Michael Terry 25 yard run. It's hard. I mean, you'll take what you can get. <laughs> it's an odd problem to have, right? Very odd, right? <laughs> it's, it's a problem that I'm sure Coach Ritterman, Mike Brinko, Jordan Rinker, all the coaching staff is like, we'll take this problem and we'll build on it because at the end of the day, it's not that bad of a problem. <laughs> like Highlands has problems, right? Like you get momentum quarter, and you shoot yourself seven, in the foot and you're stuck Zucker, with – this situation where you're kicking off to the mules to start the second half again deja vu to last week we get the ball what do we do with it if we make this a 45-0 game well it's certainly trending that way at this point as terry's still going to get a little creative with it keep the ball in his hands rather park zucker's still going to get a little creative with it and now he's going to put on the jets cross midfield and just shy of the 45-yard line, call it the 47, and that's where Colin Ernst and company will come back out to work with a 38-0 lead in their pockets. Right on cue, Leron, the ball starting on, on, on the other side of the 50 where you want it to go, and that's probably the fourth time Yeah, that that's happened. If I'm not mistaken? Yes. I, I, we, the worst field position we had, I think, was the 45 on our side of the 50. But that's the worst. But as I mentioned earlier, this is arena football. You only can deal with half the field. Uh, that's a luxury. And we said earlier, special teams have been special. So here they go again, being special. And do, what more could you want if, if you're head coach Ron Riddiman? Every time your offense goes out there on the field, if they're up near the 50-yard line, the exception of scoring a touchdown, that is pretty much everything that you could want at that point, as this is Ernst holding on to it. should say Ariaga holding on to it. Patrick Ariaga getting some work at running back right now. One, one unit we haven't shouted out right, and again, it's kind of hard to shout him out when you're scoring quickly, is the offensive line is pretty much held up today, giving Colin Ernst some pass protection and creating some holes for the running backs the few times they've been able to run. Yeah, again, uh, because of some injuries, a little bit of patchwork 
Uh, or maybe not patchwork. That's condescending. Some some mixing and matching going on on the line today. Jackson Hildebrand, of course, the left tackle captain. He's back. But Robert Romero and Bentley Edwards at left guard and center both getting starts today as Ertz on the keeper. Going to his left, across the 35-30. Got a pair of owls to beat. They take him down inside the 15. Colin Ertz, Number 10, Colin another 30-plus yard gainer. Takes Lincoln, it all the way down to the 13-yard line. And again, Alamo Heights in the red zone. You know, most of them say, you got tackled by the punter? In this case, the punter is actually a defender. Albert <laughs> Perez Torres had a saving tackle there for the Highlands Owls. And Colin Ertz. Found a way to get loose and uh, get up the field and get a big gainer. And we found out why, because there was a blue jersey holding a white jersey. Ah. So hit the pause on that and walk us all back. National officiating day. <laughs> Put it on your calendar, <laughs> people. Holding penalty on the mules. I got to say, you've been civil so far today. I'm a civil guy. I mean, you're right. Largely, you are civil. 99% of the time. It's that 1% of the officiating. I know that. That's only when they push me close to the edge, right? Like, that's tonight. They've been civil. And I want to <laughs> shout out this National <laughs> Officials Day. So thank your local official for taking time out to officiate these games. Without <laughs> them, we have nothing. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Ernst has a little bit of something there with the positive gainer. Going to pick up the first Colin down. With the keeper. Looked like a ping pong ball there. It, it did. A couple yeah. tackles and kept it going. Yes. Move Very much so. So we'll see how much longer Colin Ernst and Co. stay out there. It was after one series last week where he was pulled. Was the starter as Robert Mickler actually comes off. He gets ready to go in. Or I should say Robert Mickler loosening up as now we operate under the assumption he's going to be coming in sooner before later. But in the meantime, though, it's Ernst. Three receivers to his left. It's going to go on the bubble screen. Terry gets a couple blocks. Terry gets to the outside. Michael Terry, touchdown. More of the same. Alamo Heights, 44 nothing. They take the lead. Touchdown. Nice. Play design, even better execution, resulting in a touchdown. I will tell you this year, what I'm loving the play calls this year, right? I feel like there's a different variety that offense quarter Mike Branco, he's getting in his bag and he's utilizing tools. If you're the opposing team and you watch film on this offense, it's a study hall. Like, you really got to break down who's doing what, when, and where, and why. Because there's so many different threats on this offense that they can Flores take it to the house. Flores' is extra point is good, so he is now 16 of 16 on the season with his extra points. Kicked his first field goal of the game earlier on today. So 45 nothing is where we are at. So for the Mules, that is a 48-yard touchdown drive. Did it on four plays to extend that advantage. So we'll see what is next in terms of whether or not that offense comes back on the field, that first team offense, and I guess really for that matter, whether the first team defense ever, ever, uh, excuse me, first team defense does come back on the field. But time and the uh, points advantage certainly working in Alamo Heights' favor at this point. And what a difference a year makes. If you recall last year, this is the game where the lights, the storm, all went out, Linus created havoc. I think the they scored like 22 to 11 or something Mateo crazy like that. Um, four, not the case this year. No. Weather's great, just hot, and it's 45-0 in the third quarter. Another 100-degree kickoff today. Temperature at kickoff. Not that we're telling you at home anything you don't already know as kickoff goes out of bounds. So put the ball at the 40-yard line. Yeah, not anything we haven't told you or anyone else, your neighbor, friend, whatever, has been talking about. Another scorcher. It's actually an interesting conversation I had with Ron Ritterman. Was that, not sure if you saw, but the north side yeah. and... Um, and NEISD, yeah, Northeast. They pushed their games Kick back out 30 out minutes Owls begin first because of 10, the heat. Really was because of the construction of 6-4. and the four. 
you know, they have three schools. You think it was more because of that? Definitely. Have, yeah. if, you, if you have to go six and four right now, it's down to like a lane and a half. Yeah, and, you're probably right. Uh, I, they were interviewing the band director, and he talked about how they barely made it to the game because of the traffic going from Bandera, which is having traffic, getting on 1604 all the way through I-10 to get to either Comelander or Heroes. It's just a strain because bus drivers, there's a shortage, so they're having to do double runs and to pick them up. You know, they send 14 buses to a game and to coordinate 14 buses, 5 o'clock rush hour traffic. That's a chore. That is a chore. Christopher Dotson, the ball That's also here. Christopher Dotson, who just got his first carry of the afternoon. The but to your point, I'm assuming the heat helps that you get to start 30 minutes later. I'm not knocking that as a consideration, but um, if you don't live off 604, then you don't. You're a blessed person. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. No I, was it you that told like me that 604 has been under construction for the last 45 years? And uh, not to throw my age out there, but it's similar. Yeah, I brought that up. You didn't. I didn't say that part. <laughs> <laughs> Dodson with the carry. But. No, as it pertains to the temperature, we'll say that it wasn't anything related to 1604 or not. I asked Ron Redman potentially in the context of whether or not with the with the temperatures being as high as they as they have been, have they talked about pushing games back to 7:30, pushing games back to 8 o'clock? And he said, "Yeah, we talked about it." But I think at this point of the season, they're out of that danger zone mm -hmm. of these 100-degree kickoffs. And yeah, and a well rush coming. Oh, the ball is loose. loose. And it's going to be another touchdown. Alamo Heights, Joseph Duperrier, his first start of the day, first start of the season, first start of his career, a memorable one. Sack, scoop, score, Alamo Heights defense capitalizing on the miscue. Duperrier in for the Mules touchdown. The strip, the sack, the score for the junior linebacker getting the start tonight in place of Will Broderick and taking full advantage out of that weak linebacker spot, out of the Will linebacker spot. And it's the Heights defense. So extra point on deck for Flores, which will make it 52. Nope, it's gonna stay at 51 blocks. So first miscue of the season. This can get returned, and I'm not sure Heights is aware of it. Now they are. <coughs> they were a little slow to react yeah, to that. Good job by Highlands, keeping their head on a swivel, keeping that play alive. Extra that was a live football. By Highland. It's also to get, see good. Good to see that they're they still have some fight in them. They haven't uh, folded wave the white flag or anything like that because most teams in the situation wouldn't have been alert to even know that that ball is returnable. And so 51 to nothing is where the score quarter. stands with the Alamo Heights, their zero. first defensive touchdown of the season, if I'm not mistaken. It is their first defensive touchdown of the season. That's where it's at, 51 to nothing in favor of the Mules. Along with Ron Fields, Ladies, Casey Vieira here with you, third member of our broadcast team. Let's check in with Tosh Young on the field. I'm at this arena right now. 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 Highlands came out. Play what? Look for QR codes in tonight's game program or at the gate entrance table by the Mule Dome and get registered. That's football 101. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I can see you're wearing Steam Team Spirit. Highlands. What's, what was the idea behind this? Well, obviously. And I was a, a little tribute to call me. The Flores kickoff goes into the end zone. All right, thanks. You know. And the Owls begin. The end zone. Taj Young again with Principal Sean Reno down on. The sideline. So give Highlands the football at the 25 yard line as that clock is starting to run. Just notice the run, that 45 point advantage when it goes into effect. The clock starts ticking away and 
that running clock has commenced at the 6.20 and ticking away. So barring the offense catching some fire here for Highlands, um, that is the current state as to how the rest of this will play out. That was another miscommunication on the handoff. Gaskin, nobody home. And the Mules defense all over him. Gaskin, him, to his credit, still standing. He was fighting, but he, he was he fighting. the wrong fight. When you have six blue jerseys coming in Gaskin and Gaskin slow to get up, he's okay. Tackle That's good to see. Albert you have six Mules heading your direction. There are more desirable uh, states to be in. Penalty yes, flag that out. would be one of them. Well, that would not be one. I should say. I'd like to go back to your point of, you know, starting the games later. We're about to get in that cold season, right? Um, on a Friday night, yeah, 730 helps people uh, get from work, get to a game. On a Thursday, though, I, I would love to keep it at 7 because Thursday nights are rough. You, you get there, it's that extra 30 minutes was like a whole hour and a half difference. you got to get up and go game. to work the next day. Yes, and like Fridays after a Thursday game, which we're fortunate we don't have any. We only have all Friday games and one Saturday game. If I'm not mistaken, uh, so you are not that's mistaken. Really, that, that's a beautiful yeah. thing. I, I just the, the, the test Thursday games. <laughs> Unless you're a pro or in college, it's like keep high school Friday. Well, especially from us up here. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you're a player, you probably you probably don't mind the extra eight day layoff. But for us, I mean, for the everyday working working Never folk like us that's just one period. extra day that we have to Jack stay up late to work yes. I mean, look, last night was a challenge years. watching the chiefs and lions because you're like, <laughs> i had to get I, I didn't have my preseason regimen going it's so i can make thursday special now. but i am looking forward to sunday um, and a big full day of saturday college football what might i ask is leron fields is pre-game regimen stretching a couple push-ups <laughs> Uh, this is to watch. Yeah, well, I mean, you're going to be on the couch a little bit, right? I try to incorporate in between breaks some push-ups. Okay. Uh, maybe some crunches, but definitely going to have oh. some snacks. <laughs> got to offer some balance, right? Got to have balance. <laughs> got to burn it off right away. Jaw can't do all the workout. <laughs> on topic of burning, Rodriguez turning yeah, on the burners a little bit. Green Still going to be short Rodriguez. of the and first the down Walker marker matter of inches. Looks like... Coach Landero is going to punt. That will be the and case. So a three and a half on deck down. for they Highlands. Ja Vu. That's, is that um, Mateo Rodriguez's first catch today? Or he had the screen pad. That was the first one where he was lined up wide. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that was his first reception off a of lining out of wide. That was high snap on the punt. Perez Torres uh, looked like somebody got a piece of it. That was... Looked like Bogus, who was in there, got a piece of it. Mules take it all the way back inside the 25-yard line. So it was a high snap. Dangerous territory for Perez Torres. The second he caught that football, it was going nowhere positive. And it did not go anywhere positive for Highlands. Plenty positive for Alamo Heights. As they'll go back to work. And Owls territory and switching gears at quarterback now under center for the Mules. It is the junior backup, Robert Mickler. Mickler the flickler. He can flick that ball with a wrist. He played one down last week. It was a 21-yard touchdown pass. We'll see what is in store this week. It was one, yeah, one down, one, one play. One down, one play, yes, sir. That was it. And, and it's Robert Mickler holding on to the football. Yeah, the second down he plays actually looks pretty good in itself. He's going to pick up a first down just outside of the 10 yard line. Robert Mickler, Robert Mickler in the quarterback. junior quarterback, he six foot ball. 217. A little bit Jordan more Marino traditional Moves of your signal chains. caller, if you That's will. And Mickler coming rules. off the first field. Down. And we'll see if that's Ernst going to go back in or Brandon Pena. It's going to be, it looks like it will be Brady Pena coming in. So, for Robert Mickler, he's played two plays this season. One was, well, at least the past two games. One was a touchdown pass. The other was a 11-yard carry in which he got torn down by multiple jerseys. Nobody's going to tear down Patria Ariaga. Another and touchdown on the ground Ariaga for the Mules, the second in as many touchdown. weeks for the do-it-all tailback linebacker, 57 to nothing, Alamo Heights. 
Um, I don't hate repeating myself, but when I say deja vu, it's two things, right? Kay. Yes, we've seen this before, but I'm looking across to the other side at the Highland sideline, and what stands out most is they don't have a lot of guys. So right. I say that to say we already alluded to they have guys going both ways, but there's no, there's no, there's nothing coming to save them over there. There's no depth. There's no like, let me try another guy or try something different. This just is old fashioned. It is what it is. And the mighty mighty mules are just—I wouldn't say they're flexing. They're just playing football that's working on their favor really conveniently. Extra point up and good. Vagas back in to do the honors. Lefty kick. Slash tight end. Slash punt blocker. Slash. (laughs) He's doing it all tonight. He is. 5'11", 248. Anderson Vagas. Doing everything he is asked out there to do. We were talking about the trap. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say I commend him because, you know, he's the backup kicker, right? So he he started the game off and he was good in his extra points and – now he just gets another one. So staying ready as a kicker is a hard job because you never know when your number's going to get called. And when it, when it is, you don't want to be the, the guy that messes things up. And he's done a great job tonight. Yeah, hit uh, now three extra points yes, sir. on the day. Hit two in the first and now one here in the third. One of the things that Coach Ritterman brought up to us this past week, and it's kind of one of those – for lack of a better term, kind of touchy subjects. It's the fact that his team in this district largely is not going to face a whole lot of adversity this season. There's about two games that you're looking at on the schedule that may be a, when I say tussle, it may be a challenge early. And if your team has the gravitas that they've shown these past two games, we'll separate late. We'll put a pause on that thought. We'll continue this yeah. conversation. We'll That's step aside because with that running clock, quarter, we hit the end of the third quarter of play. All Alamo Heights on top of Highlands, 58 to nothing. We'll step aside. You are watching Alamo Heights football, a production of AH Sports Media. That she wrote, speech to the young, speech to the progress. Welcome back. This is Gaskin on the return. Gaskin has room to run. Willie Gaskin at the 30-20-10, the all-district standout do-it-all. Finally putting some offense on the board for Highlands. A 98-yard return for the score, 58-6. Willie Gaskin. Offering a bit of positivity for what's been a long day for the Owls. He made our special teams look not so special on that play. He turned on those Jets, and he was gone. And uh, that that fired up the Highlands Owls sideline, gave him a a glimpse of hope. Uh, We tried to track him down. He just has that extra burner speed. So shout out to Willie Gaskin on Highlands Highlands Owls special teams return for touchdown. Watching Linus Flores make an effort on that. It's a cold world as a kicker, yeah, isn't it? Is. Yeah, being, it that, is. <laughs> being that last line of defense, the they're banking on you to stop a guy like good. Willie Gaskin running at 150 <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. You're on the island. But you know, I will say this, even though it didn't happen, I, I don't mind him being in that position because he's also he also plays defender uh, as a soccer player. So he kind of gets the concept, right? It's just it's still not fair if the, the guy is got speed like that i was gonna say i'm not entirely sure linus is gonna encounter a, a guy like willie gaskin running at that speed wearing probably about 20 pounds of armor on top of him i know i know i know linus is wearing some armor himself <laughs> but it's the effort that counts i, I threw that in there because he's not your average kicker right? he's not he, he doesn't just spend time on the sideline he actually worked some this week at safety so just furthermore his instinct 
uh, of knowing, like, you can't tackle in soccer, and that was one opportunity to do so. No, so, what do you think he was looking forward time, to? Sorry. His well, eyes were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, there's there's that moment where you're looking forward to something, but then, like you said, you got a Willie Gaskin. That ain't the moment. You're looking <laughs> yeah, it's not if the one it you was, wanted. If it was Jilly Gaskin, then maybe <laughs> you feel like a little bit better. But Willie was was gone. He was fast. It's all fun and games until you see an all district receiver coming at you like that, right? And it's your first. It's your first year playing football. Yeah, I don't want to tackle anymore. I'm good. Is on the return. Is that my? No, this is DK Garza. Garza getting to the outside was tripped up. Had he gotten by, that was probably points on the board for the Mules. Instead, stumbles at the 30. The and we'll see which the way they go at quarterback, the, whether it's Pena or whether it is Mickler Highlands. again. But Alamo Heights, in a stunning turn of events, takes over in Highlands' side of the football field. Looks like it's Mickler out there, number 15, in the huddle, commanding the troops. We have the offensive coaches on our side, I guess, to our right up here in the press box. 15, Robert and so when Mickler came off, it was kind of one of those deals like, oh, no, we're going to pull him now. No, I got him another chance. And they gave him another chance. So here he is, the junior quarterback. To the ground they go. This is Aiden Villarreal, the backup running back. He had two touchdowns on the ground last week, 52 carries, two play. touchdowns, 52 rushing yards for the 5 foot 6, 190 pounds. And then quarterback for the Mules, number 16, Brady. Picking up gain of 9 on the play. So it's Pena now going back at it. Pena looking across the middle, deflected at the line of scrimmage. Was that intercepted? I or don't think it was intercepted. I oh. think it dropped in time. Pena's I think that hit green before, before that was intercepted. So it'll be a third down upcoming. Continuing the thought that we had before the Gaskin touchdown was Ron Riddiman was saying how he wants his team to face adversity that it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if they woke up and they're down by two touchdowns early in a football game and they have to dig themselves out of it. If it happens, he feels good in his team's ability to respond. But you don't entirely know that until they actually do it. As Villarreal, another positive gainer on the play. In your mind, if you're Ron Riddiman seeing something like that, how... Again, concerning is, is strong, but how much of that down. kind of or do you have on your radar as the season goes along, knowing, hey, we didn't play in these one-score games, these seven-point games inside four minutes left. I would have liked to at least come across that. Is that type of thing a small bother to you, if you're Ron Redman? Yes, because, again, you want – this is a young team. You want to see how they respond to adversity. And it's a coaching moment, right? Like, hey, it's all fun and games when you're up 50 to 6, 58 to 6 or 7. What is it like when it's 7 7? You're down. For, well, we kind of saw it, though, right? We saw it against That's the game. The yeah. And they Houston found a way. So I, I, I could say we've checked that box, but you still want to see it again, right? Right. It's, it's regular season. Um, it's okay to make some mistakes. So you can correct them. Because when you get in the postseason, it's final exam season. And it's win or go home. There's no retest. Kingston Kennan, his first catch of the day. Take it inside or to the five-yard line. One thing that you could argue with that Seguin, I guess, is movement off sides. It's going to be, it looked like that might have been Heights movement first. The one thing I think that might have that idea a little bit fresher in Ron Williams' mind in that sense was that Seguin game went from convincing, a convincing win to a not so convincing win very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think if Ron were, if Ron were to have his team come across that, have the chance to do that, he would take it up on it. To have that kind of situation where you do have a level of adversity where that tide is changing, fortunately for the Mule's sake, Seguin just kind of ran out of time there. Yes. 
uh, because that offense caught fire yeah, late. It was very much a survive and advance type of deal, which, of course, Alabama Jefferson fans School, did. Right here but I think there is something Stadium. to that. I agree. I do Kick think there is something to that. Can't hurt. No and, hey, it might come next week because the McCollum team traveling to Harlandale's Alamo Heights. They can play. They, they can play, and they can test our defense. As we saw today, one of the things about our defense that it took a little bit of time for them to catch up on is the passing game. Our DBs got tested. They gave up a couple catches. They buckled down and, and got, got it going. But with the more experienced receiver crew, with the more experienced quarterback, that may be something that we're Number talking a lot about next week. Yeah, we call them 2-0 on the season so far. Off tonight. They're back tomorrow. Five yard gain they continue the play. district play. Going to be taken on Edison. They're 0-2 on the season is Edison. Yeah, McCollum's a good football team. Going to offer a good test so far. Put up 54 last week on this Highlands team that we're seeing after a 27-0 win against Southside to open the new season. Already two weeks at weekend games. They've actually, interestingly enough, next week when they play, as back to the ground, this is Villarreal, touchdown, Alamo Heights. It's going to be 64-7, Aiden, Aiden Villarreal. Third score of the season for the senior, keeping more of the same on the board for the Mules. Interestingly enough, I've never seen this before. You might have seen this. McCollum, they've played two Thursday games. And tomorrow, a Saturday game. Next week, week four, will be their first Friday game of the season. I've never seen that. We can finally get to week four and to finally have your first Friday. We were just talking about how much you hate Thursday games. Just imagine yes. if you were on the call for the McCollum broadcast. Yes. <laughs> Man, that would be a doozy. You would not be about this life. Yeah, you, you know, I thought you where I thought you were going that is last year this time, right? It was the same scenario. There was an apex, it was Alamo Heights, and it was Harlandale. Right. And I don't want to say it was for the district championship, but that's what it was built up to because both teams are coming in undefeated. They both have the um, stalwart teams that were ranked pretty high in the district. And so next week becomes that same type of game, Alamo Heights versus McCullum. Um, McCullum facing Edison, which could be a win for them. So they're coming in with momentum and steam. Alamo Heights coming off the Highlands. They've, they've had one like opponent. And... We'll see next week who's who and what's what. It's great and it's going to be the first road test for your Alan White's Mules. And that may be where Ron Burnham is let, uh, leaning towards that, needing some adversity, because that game may start off. And last year's game, there was some adversity. It was, I believe, 7 7 out the first quarter. And then Alan White's buckled Henry down and just went to kick off. It was Four not close points. after the first quarter. Four, Getting ready to put a final touch on this 65 to 7 advantage that they do have to the Mules. So, again, next week it's McCollum on their place. Alamo Heights actually playing three of their next four games away from Harry B. Orem Stadium, which will present an interesting task in itself. Knowing that, hey, you want some adversity, coach? You got it. Three or four on the road, and you got a good team next week. A good undefeated, likely to be three and O team next week. You got what you want. So back to the action that knocked down Romeo Garza still ten. under center, the freshman for two other scores the Owls. So district. next up for Highlands, in case Harlandale you're curious, they take on the That game is and next Thursday, the 14th. Highlands going to fall to 0-3 on the season, 0-2 in district play. Alamo Heights going to move to 3-0, like we mentioned before. 2-0 in 14-5A district play. As 
Back to the ground they go. This is Christopher Dotson getting some Christopher more Dotson touches here player. as we tick under a minute to play in this week three Friday night from here on Broadway along with Ron Fields and Taj Young. Casey Vieira here with you. Mules getting ready to move to 3-0 on the year. Laurent's going to trek on down to the sidelines to catch up with head coach Ron Ritterman to what we would assume would be a very happy headman for this Alamo Heights football team. Let's back to the ground one more time. Dotson evading shedding some tacklers, ultimately taken down by four blue jerseys on the play, and that should do it with the running clock, and that will do it. As the ball game, our final score, the Alamo Heights Mules 65. So, final score tonight here from Harry B. Orem Stadium, Alamo Heights winning 65 to seven over Highlands to move to three and zero on the season. Owls dropping to 0-3 on the season on the back of another balanced offensive attack for the Mules. Colin Ernst with another pair of touchdowns, two in the air actually today. Michael Terry, another one on the ground. DK Garza, Aiden Villarreal, both with a pair of scores at the backfield. The big performance though, was someone who was actively involved in the offense for really the first time this season. Trip Johnson, he is our player of the game this evening. LaRon will check in with Trip down on the field momentarily as well for the sophomore. Had a touchdown reception. Had a kick return touchdown for a score. Should say a punt return touchdown for a score. Did the sophomore providing his value, something that Ron Ritterman has been very complimentary of of this Mules team. Specifically, Trick Johnson in this context. Been very complimentary of his ability to put him all over the field, and he did exactly that tonight. So Johnson gets his first two touchdowns of the new season. Heights moves to 3 0 on the season. Next on deck, that McCollum game we've been talking about at length. That, of course, will be at Harlandale as our all McCollum and Harlandale football games. We await for our friend LeRon to catch up with Ron Rinneman after he talks to his team. Under the assumption that that message would be a positive one, Coach Ritterman gonna move his record with Alamo Heights to now 40, correction, 34 and 6 in his fourth season here with the Mules. Alamo Heights still undefeated in this building since it was renovated and reopened back in the 2021 season. Mules will be on the road for a little while, as we mentioned, three of four on the road. Oh, here away from Harry B. Orham Stadium. The McCollum game next week and then Burbank before coming back home. Well, I should say a bye thrown in there as well. So on the road next two weeks, a bye on the 28th, which would be week six. And then back home for Friday, the 6th of October, which is against Jefferson. Actually been playing some good football in their own right. Very strong offensive showing recently saw it last week so that means after tonight alamo heights will not be back here in this building for almost a month if we're counting the days correctly there when you factor in the bye week yeah won't be until october 6th that's the next time alamo heights will be back here at harry b orham stadium but in the meantime they'll enjoy the time that they do have
Yeah, Joseph DiPario on your screen. He had a big day today. A strip sack and a score making his first career start. And that is how you make an impact. Ron Riddiman dialing up all the right numbers today. And DuPeria getting his number called and, well, doing what you do in that context of showing up when need be. All right, LaRon Field. All right, Coach Riddiman, congrats on the win tonight. Hey, thank you. Um, pretty impressive. Once again, week after week, we find a new guy on your team stepping up. Testament to you and your coaches. How, what, what would you describe today's game like for you? Well, it was another measuring stick. Or, were we better than last week? I think the answer is going to be yes. We'll have to really get on the video and see. Uh, I think tonight we found you know, just a couple more playmakers. We feel like we've got a bunch of playmakers, and when we get everybody clicking on all cylinders, I think we could be really dangerous. Uh, defensively, it's just about being more aggressive, keep being more aggressive, and keep doing it and keep doing it until we just get in the habit of three and out. So we have our goals. We have our mission. We have a vision of what it could really look like, and we're getting better and better each week. And as a coach, I'm excited about that. You should be because from looking up in the box down, what we notice is that first series or so, Highlands was able to get yards in the ground. The defense stepped up. Our theme we talked about tonight was special teams was really special. Talk to us about how that looked and that plan was for tonight for you guys. Sure, it's, it's been the same for three weeks. If you look, go back to the, the Seguin game, we won the game because of the kicking game. We won the special teams plays, which we won. And then last week we had a bunch of explosive special teams plays. And then tonight we had a bunch of explosive special teams plays. When you do that, you have a chance to put points on the board. And so our guys buy into it. They practice hard. They want to be good at it and it shows up on Friday night, which just gives our team a big advantage. It definitely shows up. Speak to this for us. Starting field position, you've literally had half the field every night. I made the comment that it felt like we were playing arena football. How do you work that in practice to, to get full yard reps to drive the ball? Because y'all been pretty quick score offense. Does that worry you some, or, or do you take what you can get? No, I mean, we're, we practice to sustain drives and make first downs and make first downs and then put the ball in the end zone. But when you have athletic skill guys that have the chance to go the distance every time they touch it, that's what you're seeing, you know, what's going on right now in these games. So we, what we got to do is just be consistent in what we do and then let the players make plays. Football's still a player's game. And if they, you got guys that can make plays, then you have a chance to do special things. I will say that this year, that what's special about it, we talked about multiple players doing multiple things. And I just want to give you credit because, again, week after week, you still keep shocking me as a coach. I see the usefulness from you <laughs> and from your – your coaches and the, the play designs are, are more beneficial this year in the sense of you never know who's getting the ball. Like, I know there's a Michael Terry out there, but you turn around, it's Parks, it's Tripp. Josh Rattata got his first catch today. Last week, it's Bennett Johnson got a catch. You got to be feeling pretty happy about that. I do. I think we have a bunch of talented guys, and I don't think talent's ever going to be a question. It's when the team chemistry is really gelling and great player leadership, then I think you're going to see something special out of this group. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate your time. Appreciate y'all. Y'all do yes, a great sir. job. That's Coach Ron Ritterman. Next up, we have our player of the game. He's not tripping. He's standing right next to me, Trip Johnson. Nice Congrats. Thank you. Player of the game tonight. Um, this was the Trip Johnson show. Yes, you definitely found a way to trip your way in the end zone and trip your way around this field on punt returns. Tell us, take us through the game. What goes through your mind before the game, before you step out on this field? You know, I take football very seriously in my life. It's definitely one of my favorite things. Um, I take football as more of like a life thing. Uh, Coach Ruman likes to talk about like character and a lot of that stuff, and I take that to heart. So uh, I really like to do my best, and you know. How, how does it feel to be a punt returner, right? Like most people are like, that's the one position I don't want to play because the ball goes up, eleven men screaming to hit you, but you seem to handle it pretty well. Right, right. Punt return is very uh, like nervous thing because you know someone could come hit you with you not looking, but after that first game, you just get that adrenaline and you keep going, and you know not, you don't really got to worry about much. What did you eat for breakfast today? Because I'm going to tell you this. If you ate it today, you're eating it next Friday. Of course. Uh, my uh, dad actually made me eggs, and I had bacon and uh, waffles. Hey, Dad, next week I'm going to need you to make two plates because the brother's going to be hungry next Friday. But let your son eat because he was eating today. Nice yes, nice job today. Play of the you. game, Thank Trip you. Johnson. Guys, back up to you, the booth. Back to Casey Vieira to close out the broadcast. Fellas, appreciated, obviously, a very happy Alamo Heights Mules team, as they can call themselves a 3-0 Alamo Heights team after a 65-7 victory tonight here at Harry B. Orem Stadium. That's going to wrap things up for us on our broadcast this evening. For Laurent on the field, for Taj Young on the field, and everyone involved with our 
AH Sports Media Production team. We thank you for tuning in. Our next broadcast comes next Friday. Big time game against McCollum at Harlandale. Should be good. Likely two 3-0 and teams going at it. Coverage starts at 645 pregame. And again, as always, you can check it out right here on our YouTube stream. Brought to you by AH Sports Media. For everyone involved tonight, my name's Casey Vieira. Final score, Alamo Heights, 65-7 winners over Highlands. Have a good night.